my, my, rock and roll will never die. When you walk through so the storm. I'm working. With, with I'm, that. Yeah. You know, newer bands, it's it's always nice to get an idea of how they started. You, you've mm -hmm. been around, <laughs> shall we shall we say, a, a day or two. I, uh, I don't that's a very polite way of saying it. And now we've been around for, let me think about this, almost Four uh, decades? 37 years, I yeah. think, yeah. The, we'll, we'll round up. Yeah, 40. 40, and nine, uh, 40, 40 it will be in 2026. 20, 40 bloody years, bloody hell. <laughs> it, and do you remember how many of them? Uh, I, well, it's a funny thing. I've written two books in the last couple, few years, and um, so it, I've been forced to remember a lot of stuff. Well, it's not forced. It, you know, you know. Once you remember, you know, you, I talk to friends and stuff, and and they'll, they'll remind me of something, and then it'll set off an avalanche of other memories and stuff. You know, but um, it, it some very often needs a prompt. You know, <laughs> you know, that we were a little, a little uh, wayward when we were younger, should we say? I, I yeah, yeah, something like <laughs> that. Well, it's quite interesting because you know Simon Craig and myself will reminisce, and we'll have three very different memories of the same incident. <laughs> <laughs> so, what the truth is, no one will ever know. So I'm, I'm going to start off with, uh, shall we say, 10 obscure questions. Go on. Uh, most have nothing to do with music. Okay. All right. Uh, beer or wine? Well, wine, traditionally, although I, I fairly recently gave up drinking on the European tour, actually. I was sick for a little while and I uh, wasn't getting any better, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, maybe if I gave up the, the booze, my, 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 it might help. And it did. And I've managed to uh, to stay off it since. And how long now? Uh, since April. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's not a world record or anything, but um, I, I, you know, I'm not averse to having a glass of wine at home with my wife. You know, I'm not giving up drinking per se, but I've just given up drinking on tour. I, li I like to be, you know, I like I like these days to be able to do the shows and and be able to sing properly mm -hmm. and to remember. <laughs> You know, remember words and things. You know. Well, when you do have a glass of wine, what what kind of wine do you like? You red, you white. Uh, you vino tinto, red, red. Red. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, steak or fish? Sorry. Steak or fish? Neither. I'm veg Neither? a vegetarian. For how long? Uh, about twenty, twenty-five years now. Twenty-five years. Yeah. Fit. Uh, favorite vegetarian dish. Well, I must say that last night after the show in Atlanta, I had the most delicious vegan burrito. So, so Mexican, I like. Okay. Do you I, know but but I, I, live, I live in Brazil, so we don't get Mexican food down there, so I'm making the most of it whilst I'm here. We have a vegan restaurant right across the street. Oh, look at that, eh? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, head, head over. I, I, ate, uh, I ate dinner there the other night. Yeah. Um, they're... Uh, their their vegan bao buns are fantastic. Uh, okay. Nice uh, mu mushroom bao buns. So They're very good. Okay, we might send someone over there for food after the show. I can't eat before a show. Yeah. No. Uh, I'll, I'll have breakfast when I wake up in the morning, which actually was the other half of the, uh, last night's burrito. I only ate half of it last night. So this <laughs> for breakfast this morning, I had the other half. <laughs> yeah. um, so when 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 you're upset with someone... Mm. Favorite cuss word? Am I allowed to say? You're allowed to say whatever you want. It's, it's, it's not like anyone's ever going to see this. No. Okay. <laughs> um, my favorite cuss word would be. You know, like when a sound bo when a sound guy walks in. Yeah, on my, interview, I mean, what's your favorite cuss word? I mean, I, 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 I tell you what, I, I don't find I don't find swearing offensive at all. But I do f find when somebody says Manchester United. Offensive. <laughs> yeah, bear with me. First, first album you remember purchasing? Electric Warrior T Rex. Okay, great album. Mm, fantastic. Still sounds fantastic to this day. Love it. There's something about those recordings from from the 1950s through. 
the mid 70s that are just absolutely yeah. fantastic absolutely i mean not not everyone but there's a, there there is something about the 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 the, the sound of people playing and performing together in a room at the same time you know, with, it, with with the advent of multi-track became the advent of, okay, we'll put the drums down first, and then we'll put the bass on top, and then we'll put the guitars on top of that. So you don't get that shifting of air in the room when you're all playing together. Right. You you listen to some, I don't know, Frank Sinatra records of the fif- 50s, right? He, he's singing with an 80-piece orchestra. I mean, that is a whole performance. The vocal, there's no auto-tune, no, you know, none of that stuff. And it's incredible sounding, and uh, and again, a lot of those '60s records, you know, I mean, it, it towards the end of the '60s certainly it got st- went to four track instead of stereo. <laughs> that was a luxury. You but, ever, but you, you ever know. listen to any of the the old uh, like original blues recordings yes, of like I do. Lead Belly, yep. Lightning Hopkins? I love all that old stuff. I got yeah. I got into it quite late. In the 2000s, I found that there wasn't a lot of new music coming out that was really, you know, flo- f- floating my boat. Yeah, yeah. it was it's like a, a, a pretty piss poor time for m- music for me, really. So I kind of went backwards. That's when I really got into Bob Dylan, for one. You know, I mean, I obviously heard Bob Dylan before and listened to him, but it was I really got into Bob Dylan in the 2000s. And then I went backwards and got into Hank Williams and Johnny Cash. And even further back into Robert Johnson in the Blind Willies and all the rest of it, you know, and uh, um, all that kind of old blues stuff, you know. Well, it's, 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 it's kind amazing. of the basis for everything you play, if you think about Absolutely it. Absolutely, it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. You know, l- uh, you know it's funny uh, how people, you know, it's like, oh, you know, who was the first, you know, punk band? The Sex Pistols, the Ramones, the, the Red Belly, all these guys. I mean, yeah. Bill Diddley cranking out, yeah, you know, 20 beats per minute faster than anybody was playing at the time. That was punk. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, there's, there's some great music, you know, been uh, over the years that, you know, and, and uh, I mean, obviously, the recordings are quite primitive, but that actually adds They're quite beautiful, a, a, Yeah, a real charm to, you, I mean, you, you know, I mean, a lot of the stuff's got the crackle of the record, you know, still. And, and that just makes me feel like playing the records. So, some of these old Lightning Hopkins albums, you you can hear the breath on the mic. You can hear the toe tapping yeah, yeah. between notes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. those were real recordings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, no. by real artists and well, you know, music makers. Real. I mean, even down to the you know the guy working the lathe cutting the yeah, record. Yeah, it, you're right. You're right. And and there was there is some kind of magic about that. But you know, then again, you know, kids that are around now are are used to be able to making music on a laptop, and you know the way they make make it and and they got uh, auto tune. They got all kinds of plugins to help them, and in in a, in 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 a way they don't really need to to play in a, and, and be a virtuoso at all no. you know they can play it's still but for the best of that stuff still needs imagination you know you still need an imagination to create the good music and there is good music being created by kids today uh, uh, absolutely i mean you know, you look at some of the stuff like you know billy eilish and her brother billy eilish music. fantastic I, I love it yeah amazing I, stuff it's, it's funny i I wanted to hate her. I really did, and my, yeah. you know, and then my daughter made me listen yeah, to it. And no, I'm like, good. "Holy the, crap, this is good!" Yeah, that that you know that you get generational talents, and I think that I think Billie Eilish and Phineas are definitely one, you know one of those generational talents you know we have around at the moment. And you know, again, in in fifty years' time, there'll be people doing interviews and they're saying, "Well, I remember when Billy Eilish and they used to record. You know, they used to record on a computer." Yeah. And then now, you know, uh, who knows where it's going, to, how it's going to evolve recording, and you know, I mean, it's, it, there's all this talk of uh, AI, right? You know, music. It's like uh, again, there will be a place for it, uh, um, w- whether we like it or not. You know, I, I, unfortunately, um, it, it what it does do. I think it it uh, allows people not to become. It allows people not to become good on their instruments. You you yeah. you, you, you know you can correct any you know you cut copy and paste. 
No, I don't believe in that when you're recording. It's like it's if I'm playing a guitar part, then I'll play it all the way through a song. You know, I won't copy a chorus from one to the next chorus because you will play play it slightly differently each time. And um, I, you know, that that's just me being old school. Yeah, I, guess. I mean. You know, I guess there's no right or wrong way, way of there doing isn't. it. There um, isn't. Music is music is all about whether it touches somebody. That's all. That, that's all it is, really. I, I was talking to Kirk earlier, and you know, because he doesn't fancy himself a great guitar player. He's mm. he, he plays guitar. He knows how, but you know, mm. he's not a a master guitar player. And my thought is. You know, I think you take some of these master guitar players. I don't, I don't like any of the music they're playing. Yeah, quite. And I was having this conversation actually with Simon just this afternoon, and I w and um, we were talking about how one note that Peter Green from Fleetwood Mac could play, and it could, it could give you those chills. It could give those, you know, give you those, uh, you know, those shivers down your spine. Whereas someone like I don't know Vingy Malmsteen can play you know fifty million notes in 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 ten seconds or whatever it means nothing. You can teach anybody to play guitar that way, but you but you can't teach something that's innate is choosing one note that makes you want to cry. You know that's something that 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 you can't be taught. Uh, what, what was your first concert that? that you recall ah, ha, ha. mine was Pink Floyd uh, my first concert was Pink Floyd in holy 1974 holy crap Dark Side of the Moon tour cost me one pound and um, I was in the front row of the balcony of a 1500 capacity theatre in Bristol it was only you know a small I mean small place for them it was just uh, and um, cost me one pound I, I will if you ask me what album I've listened to more than any other album in my collection without hesitation I will say dark side of the moon I you know what was a fu it's a funny thing you know because I, I you know I, much to uh, my my shame I, I do listen to Spotify I do use Spotify I subscribe and you know listen and at the end of the year they give you a summation of what you what you've been listening to for you know the previous year and uh, surprisingly, to me anyway, Pink Floyd were my number one listen of last year. And Dark Side of the Moon, it, it, that and Wish You Were Here, my two favorite Pink Floyd albums. Uh, abso absolutely. I, yeah. I, I, I can't disagree. Yeah. The, um, Dark Side of the Moon, I mean, it's just brilliant from start to finish. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, easily one of the greatest albums at Ever. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, yeah, obviously. I mean, the sales <laughs> but bear that out. What's that? The sales bear, bear that out, you know. You know, it's, uh, I don't, I, I never even considered what the, what the sales were. It's no, it, uh, just but that is, a, I, I, if you want to, to, to validate it to the general public, you just say, well, you know, that that album is sold, I don't know, 100 million copies. Yeah, but McDonald's has so served more hamburgers than anybody. Yeah, I, you're right. You're I, right. You, I are right. you are right. You are right. You are right. But um, uh, I don't know. I mean... It, I hate to be a contrarian. No, I just, no, no. You know. you, you've got a very valid point. But then, you you, you know, I think, uh, I think if you look back at the history of music, the big sellers have been the Beatles, right. obviously. Um Rumours by Fleetwood Mac, which yep. is another good album, I think. So Michael Jackson stuff, which I'm not so keen on, but you got to hold your hands up and say, you know, it was good pop. Um, and there is always going to be a place for good pop. It's like, you know, like we're talking about Billie Eilish. It was yeah. great pop music. Uh, to me, the, the engineering quality that they were able to pull off, it, you know, in their house... Yeah, it's not just a matter of oh, you know they 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 made some good songs. It's they made some good because there's plenty of great songs that the recordings are terrible and they're still good songs. Mm -hmm. Every piece of that process, yeah, is fantastic, and there's nothing that I can fault. Th that's what that's what I'm saying about you know the ki kids kids using technology in a way now that you know, you know would. Okay, y you know, it's not people playing together in a room. It's them sitting down and, and finding, making a sound up 
that becomes a kick drum. Maybe they're using a hairbrush or right. something. You know, this that you still need imagination. You know, they might not be the greatest players in the world in the sense that you know they re can they can really 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 play. But it doesn't matter. If that's that being uh, being a virtuoso has never really impressed me. Did it, you ever see the um, string of coins used um, by Pink Floyd for money? No. So, <laughs> so they drilled a hole through coins, tied them together yeah. on a string, and would sit there and shake it. Didn't like the sound, add another coin, yeah. shake it. Yeah, there you and go. they kept doing it until they got just the sound that they wanted. Yeah. And, yeah, that's, and, you know, that string of coins is in a museum somewhere. Yeah, there's imagination but, in, in it. Yeah, it's, it's it, creativity. It, exactly. Yeah. You know, um, favorite bit of kit? Mm hmm. I'm going to say my favorite bit of kit is probably my Martin D42 acoustic guitar, which um, is currently at home. Where, where it should be. Uh, yeah, well, I, I do, when I go out and do solo tours, I take it out with me. Yeah? Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's treated very, very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, probably. I mean, I've got, you know, about 40 guitars, I think, and then that's probably my most precious. Although I've got, you know, some uh, Gretsch White Falcon, which I love, an old Fender Telecaster. I've got uh, an old Fender Starcaster. I have a 1966 Fender Electric 12, you know, I've got a whole bunch of guitars, but I think that the Martin would be my favorite. Yeah. There's something, there's something uh, kind of, obviously it's an acoustic, so it's, it's more organic. And um, I don't know, there's something about a guitar that you pull it into your body and with an acoustic, it resonates through your body, you know, where it was an electric, you play it and the, the sound comes from somewhere else right you know but with an acoustic you can feel that resonate for your body as you're playing it i think that there's something very um very yeah very uh very tactile about that do you do you ever get into um the spanish 10 finger no i'm not that clever i've only, <laughs> I've only, got, I've only got five fingers <laughs> there's uh, do you have a favorite venue that you've played? There's a venue in Germany we played many times, and I I'll always, I mean, the first time I played it was back in 1984 with the Sisters of Mercy. It's called the uh, Zesha in Bochum. Okay. And uh, on the recent European tour there, we, we did two sold out nights, and it's, it's, it's always a favorite highlight of the, of, uh, the European tours. So I have to say that. I also, but I also love playing, and my, probably my favorite place to play would be South America, maybe uh, Argentina, Buenos Aires. It's it's great when you know we we st start a show there. They sing the guitar lines, not just the words. They sing the guitar lines back uh, at you. It's amazing. So you 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 brought up Sisters of Mercy. I, um, oh, did I? I I I wasn't going going to bring bring it up, but and. Um, depending on your response, I may just edit this whole thing out and cut it out, but um, entirely up to you. Um, do you I was under the impression there, there was some, you know, still bad blood there, or is there... Not on is, my is part. It, is it in the past? Or? Not in my part. I mean, come on, it's, it's 30 odd years ago now. I mean, it's, if, if you hold on to... You know th those grievances and and uh, you know whatever re regrets. It's just it's pointless. Life's too short. No, I've got I've got no got I've mean, got no problem with what Andrew's done. I've just seen him, you know, for for years and years and years. It's you know it's like you. If I say to you, you oh you know you still seeing that bloke you used to work with thirty years ago? No, <laughs> you know that that's what it's like. You know, and he's still he's still out doing his thing. Great, you know, good yeah. for him. We're out doing our thing. It's uh, to I, two to totally different things. I mean, we have gone in very different directions. Yeah, I had heard that you that you don't like to or you you won't sign sisters stuff or no, that's not uh, true. At all. I've signed, I've signed loads of sisters stuff. Okay, 
Listen, I've got no problem with doing that. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I can't... I mean, I don't know if Andrew would sign any mission stuff, but... <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I've, in fact I've, you know, I'm not sure he signs very much sister stuff these days either, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not, I've got absolutely no problem. Yeah, fu funny enough. Uh, yeah, I, was, I just... You know, I love, a lo I love a lot of that early sister stuff. It's... You know, the what do you mean early? They, I mean, it's all early. They haven't released a record since '91, uh, so it's all early right, right, stuff. But, right, but there, but there is a difference between, you know, yes, you know, I say know, vision thing, you know, and it, first and last noise. Yeah, yes, I, I know, yeah, I know but, what you're saying. Um, but yes, I mean, so. I mean, I haven't seen them for years and years yeah. and years. You know, and the thing is, everybody tells me. Oh, you know they're not, they're really bad these days. Andrew's lost his voice, and I and I, I don't know. I don't really care. And the thing is, um, I, I I suspect that you know a lot of these people that tell me this are telling me that because they think that's what I want to hear. I don't yeah. I don't care. You know. The, I I will say I saw a video from this last tour where Terry Nunn from Berlin sang sang with them. She took the Oprah has a part from Temple of Love. Yeah. And she was fantastic. Yeah, she I, I, I love to hear that. Yeah, she, I mean, she, she she's good, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, yeah, you have a favorite city. Favorite city? Well, I've uh, I would probably there's probably three I would put on my list of favorite cities. Is uh, one would be Buenos Aires. Okay. My favorite South American city. And then um, I love Rome and Paris. Okay. They're two places that I, um, I always like to go on holiday with with my wife. Yeah. What is it about Rome? The, the architecture? Architecture, the, the, the culture, the, the, the history, you know, just, just the vibe. It's, uh, I mean, it's a crazy place to drive around, so don't get, you yeah. know, take taxis in the underground. I, I fell in love with uh, Florence while we were over there. Florence is beautiful, too. Yeah. I, I, I mean, Italy... I found the people in Florence to just be amazing. Yeah, I mean, Italy is totally totally amazing for me it's a terrible place to go and play on tour because it's so disorganized it right. really is chaotic but to go on a holiday it's, it's it's one of my favorite places for sure um so i i like to end with with my favorite uh which i usually get some good stories out of this mm. uh <laughs> craziest or most memorable touring story oh my goodness that's uh there's many many of them and and i mean i've just as i said before i've just i've just written two books over the last four or five years so um there's a lot of uh funny crazy things in that um that that could be a a good cliffhanger there's plenty of touring stories in the book yeah the two on two books there's Salad Days, which is my early years, up to the end of the Sisters of Mercy, and then there's Heady Days, which is the first five, six years of the mission. And it's all, I mean, you know, that get, kind of gets a bit crazy. So what, what I will do is, when I post the video of the interview, I'll, fi I'll find the links of the books, and I'll post the links yeah. so people don't need to look. Where, where is the best place to buy the books? Oh, you can get them on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're readily available. I, um... I don't know about here. They're definitely readily uh, readily available in Europe. Okay. Um, so I I will I will post the link the yeah. links to the book. So, so salad days because us Americans are, are lazy and we, we we like we like everything done for us. So I'll yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and, po uh, well, and post well, that. Maybe maybe the next book should be a picture book then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it would be much it would be much nicer if you made it a pop out book. You know, you oh open it, you yeah yeah out. well that's a bit that could be a bit. Risque, <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially if we go with the salad days, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, heady days. Well, I, I thank you so much for your generosity of time. I, I really pleasure. look forward to the show tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the soundtrack was great. I'm gonna go and have a little sleep now. Awesome. Yeah.